Welcome to the John M. Huntsman Center and the beginning of the women's gymnastic season at the University of Utah with the Smith's Challenge Cup, Arizona State versus Utah. Hi, I'm Bill Marcroft, and this is the beginning of the pursuit of number 10, the nine-time national champion, University of Utah, start with a magnificent seven because they are depleted with some injuries this year and here to help us with the uh, technical part of the broadcast the former Broderick Award winner as the outstanding NCAA athlete her senior year 12-time All-America Missy Marlowe. Hello, it's good to be back. This will be an exciting year. You have an uphill battle. They are short Amy Trepanier with a bulging disc. She was expected, actually they weren't sure if she was going to even be able to compete this year. It looks like she'll be able to, but not until partway through the season. Uh, Kelly Woolsey elected for personal reasons not to compete this year and to skip her senior year of, year of eligibility. And Jennifer Mercier injured her ACL ligament in her knee during uh, training earlier in the season, and she is out also. And now we go over to a fox on the floor for the first time during our coverage of University of Utah win, women's gymnastics, Dave Fox. But you know, Bill, I've been following this team for several years, and the thing that is so exciting about a meet here at the Huntsman Center is that it is truly an event. You look all around. There is, they expect a crowd of about 10,000 people. The place is packed now. The pre-game or pre-meet festivities were unbelievable. The crowd has already worked into a frenzy. It's going to really help out this youth team, Bill. Thank you very much, David. Now they are the defending national champions, University of Utah, but they are only ranked third of the nation to start behind Georgia and Alabama. Why? And that has to do with the injuries. Those three performers that I mentioned are three of the top youth com competitors, so it is going to hurt them a little bit, at least in the early part of the season, and they are going to have to prove to the other coaches in the country that they're able to stand up with the best of them. Now, Arizona State is ranked number nine, but David, they also have an injury problem with Tina Brinkman. That's right, Tina Brinkman was involved in an auto accident just this past Friday, quite serious accident. She suffered a concussion. She's back in Phoenix. The good news is it looks like she's gonna be just fine. Her team will compete without her. They'll have only five competitors in two of the events tonight, Bill, so they are thin as well. So they're not replacing Tina in vault or on floor. And that does make it hard, typically, you have six competitors on each event and you take the top five scores. So without the luxury of being able to drop that, it means that there is no room for mistakes. Jay, we're getting ready now to start the event. The youths will start in the Olympic rotation on the vault. The Sun Devils will start in the visitors Olympic rotation on the bar. And if they get through the bars, according to Coach John Speedy, which has been their most inconsistent uh, event, then he says they will really be competitive, even without Tina Brinkman, a three-time All-American. But the Utes lose Amy Trepanier, a seven-time Utah All-American. And that will hurt their lineup. However, Utah is known for their depth, and I think they'll come out just fine. Okay, first up is Alyssa Friends on the vault for the Utes. The girl. Alyssa, too, is called a handspring front vault. It's worth a 9.9, .9, so that would be considered a perfect score. They'll judge from a 9.9 .9 and go down from there. Alyssa Brent is a second-team All-America, a 5'2 junior out of Huntington Beach, California. She's a health education major, and her career high in this event is a 9.4. Let's take a look at You can see they start all the way back at the wall. It's about a 75-foot run. To the horse now she needs to keep her feet and her legs together here they come apart just a little as you can see not too bad she pulls into a tuck she's just a hair low on that landing as long as she doesn't touch the mat it's not counted as a fall and in collegiate uh gymnastics it is the best score out of the two and not the, an average or anything right else. get to take the top of the, the best score of the two balls so what is the psychology if you hit the first one you do something even more difficult the second time it depends on what you've trained. If you have a harder vault, you can try to get the easier one out of the way and then go ahead and try it. Although, you have to be a pretty strong vaulter in order to have two different vaults. So she'll try the same one again and try to land a little bit higher, not have such a deep knee bend when she hits the mat. Alyssa Friends, Junior. 
Watch your heels up over. That is a much better ball. We saw a step on the landing backwards. That's a chance off. But she didn't have the same reduction on that one because she didn't land as low. She should score a little bit higher on that second ball. And now we're going to go over to the bars for Gina Holleran. Gina Holleran of Arizona State University is a 5-2 freshman from Whitehall, Pennsylvania. She'll compete in the all-around as a freshman for the first time. She wanted a very competitive collegiate program, so she called Coach John Spini and made the initial contact and came out. She needs to get to the top of the bar on her cast. She's a little bit short on her hands, Jim, so that was a great routine for Arizona to start with, especially if, as John said, they're a little bit worried about bars. It was clean, it had the difficulty, and she stayed on. That's the most important part. And as a freshman, she will be competing in the all-around, and only two freshmen ever at the University of Utah have done that. Kristen Kenoyer was the first, and tonight, Tracy Summers will be doing it. Now, here is Holleran. Okay, you can see she didn't quite get all the way to the handstand on that cast. That is a deduction, and it also makes the following skills a little bit harder. Here's her double back dismount, very clean, just a small hop on the landing. Okay, here is uh, Sandy Woolsey and her first fault. She won't miss it because we have everything on tape. Sandy Woolsey is the one that came through last year in the NCAA championships on that second day. She's the defending NCAA bar champ. She's an All-American on bars and 9.75 is her best fault. She did the same vault. In fact, the first four vaulters will all do that same vault, a handspring front tuck. She was very clean. The thing that's going to help her score better is she landed standing straight up and down with her knees relatively straight. She won't have too many deductions on the landing other than these steps. National team member Friends came up with a 9.6. That is her best. That is her career best in the vault. Alyssa, 9.4 before. Now here's Sandy, 9.75 will be her best. And this is the first meet of the year. Now let me tell you about Sandy Woolsey. She has shin splints so bad, she does not practice the vault or the floor, but one day a week. Normally, and when, as she goes through practice, she is braced almost all the way up to her knees. They are pretty bad. Come on, Jenny. Jen McKenna of Arizona State Come on, on the bars. Jennifer is 5'3", a junior out of Columbus, Ohio. She's a purchasing and logistics management major. At 9.75 is her best bar receipt. There again, we saw that handstand didn't quite get to the top of the bar, although it didn't affect anything up until then. It'd be a couple attempts for the steps on that bar routine. Although, as I said before, I think they look clean and fairly polished, especially for the first meet of the season. Well, Gina Huller and the freshman that opened up on the bars prior to uh, McKenna got a 9.65, and that's a great opener. Very good score. And Not now, only for the first meet, but also for a freshman in her first collegiate competition ever. Here's a freshman in her first collegiate competition ever, Tracy Summers. Oh! Tracy Summers! Tracy will have no problem gaining fans this year. She's tiny, she's strong, she's powerful, and she is just a doll to watch. She says she's four foot ten. The coach said, "Don't believe it. She's four nine and ninety two pounds." Feel free to clap during the gymnast routine. The hands bring on. She gets great repulsion off the horse. Hop on the landing. Other than that, it is hard to find anything wrong with that vault. And as we said, she is only the second freshman at the University of Utah to ever compete in the all-around in her first meet. And the first was Kristen Kenoyer, who uh, finished with the NCAA all-around uh, record. Megan Marson was talking about that during their warm-up, saying they were a little bit worried they would prefer not to start that way. Tracy didn't seem phased, is what she said about Tracy. That was a beautiful second vault for handspring front touch. Well, both University of Utah performers have set in the vault Sandy Woolsley a 9.825. That's a career best, and Alyssa Friends had a career. And now we go over to the bars. And this is the young lady who was in that car accident along with Tina Brinkman. Uh, this is Carrie Courtney of Garland, Texas, 5'5", uh, five, five freshman. Uh, she still shook up. I talked to her just before, 
Her coach said she uh, had kind of a stiff neck from a whiplash. She said all she is is a little stiff, and then she did about five backflips in a row, and I don't know what stiff means. <laughs> well, it means that the show must go on. If you're going to compete, <laughs> it doesn't matter. That does show a lot of nerve, no doubt about it. She's a kid Hampton on high bar, giant full pirouette due to a reverse hex. She hung on to the bar just a little bit too long. That's why she couldn't get back to the bar and stay on. Now they are they are competing in the bars five or six competitors so they can drop one. Come on, Terry. She has 30 seconds to chalk back up if she wishes and start the routine from where she fell. Go back up to high bar, kip handstand. Giant swing, half pirouette, right to handstand. Very good. To a shoot half over low bar. Back up to high bar. She'll set up for a dismount. Giant swing. Another giant swing. And tuck double back. A nice duck land. But falling off, what does, what does this discount? And that's an automatic five-tenths deduction, and we'll see it again here. She hangs on just a little bit too long from the bar, takes her back over the bar too much, and she can't keep her hands on the top of the rail. Now we go back to the uh, vault for the University of Utah, and it will be uh, Delaney. De, uh, Kelly Delaney, who last year really had a lot of uh, injury problems and didn't have too good a year. This is the tape replay slow motion. Here's a handspring front, a little on the landing. You saw the hop to the side. That's the deduction, and her feet came apart just a hair going up over the horse. When, when they're competing at this high of a level, it's the details that count. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to catch because it happens so fast if you're not familiar with the sport. But in every event, what matters is if the feet are together, the elbows are straight, uh, the body maintains a relatively straight position. And Tracy Summer, the freshman on the vault, got a 9.8 for her opening vault, her opening event as a youth. And this is Kelly Delaney, 5'2 sophomore from Westerville, Ohio. Much, much That's what you hope to do, Bill, is take your second vault and improve on it on the first. A lot of coaches and gymnasts feel like if you show two of the ex exact same vault, the second one will score higher. So it's really important to do two good vaults and not just one. Now Delaney's career best is a 9.575. And I'm sure she'll beat that. Here's a look at the second vault. She gets up on the board well, drives her heels over the horse, pulls into a tight tuck in order to make it around. Kerry Courtney on the bars who had that uh, miss that and fell off, 9.125. And now getting ready to go on is a uh, junior, Katie Freeland, who had a tremendous sophomore last year. She was an All-American in the vault. She's out of Axtell, Nebraska, psychology major, but her bar, best bar routine is 9.70. So her feet come apart just a hair. She did not make that cast handstand over, which means now she's trying to cover. She's trying to not take a fall, somehow finish the routine. It didn't quite work there. Delaney, 9.825. A new career high in the vault for Kelly Delaney. All four Utah competitors in the vault have had PRs, personal records. She'll resume her routine here to a giant half turn, a front giant half pirouette, and her dismount and tuck double back. That's Katie Freeland of Arizona State. What that means, Bill, is they now have to count a routine with the ball. They can throw out the lowest score. But either way, they are going to have to count the ball. And her problem? She didn't go over. When she hopped her hand, she was trying to go forward over I the see. top of the bar. She didn't make it over, so she tried to keep going, but pretty hard to do. So they're going to have to count either her or Kerry Courtney's score. Kerry Courtney had a 9.125. And now back to the vault for the University of Utah and Megan Connell. And here we see a little bit different vault. She piked it. She's in the pike position in the air. Instead of tucking, it's much harder, and this ball is worth a 10.0, so they will judge it from a 10 rather than a 9.9. .9. 
you can see she has great push off the horse, perfect form, and her legs are straight in the air, and it almost looks too easy for her. She's at the back of the mat, and that is one thing that the judges really look for on vault. Even more importantly than how high you come off the horse is how far the judges travel. And you can see she almost clears the landing mat. Megan is 4'11", a junior. She's an All-American on the floor. Out of Portland, Oregon, 9.975 is her career best. And it actually did have more control on the landing. I think that was before maybe a half a tenth or a tenth higher. And just before her, uh, Kelly Delaney, of course, got that 9.825, which is almost uh, three-tenths higher than her record coming in. Now let's go down to Dave Fox and Tracy Summer. All right, first of all, I'm 6'3", she's 4'10", so let's get that out of the way right now. <laughs> Congratulations uh, on your 9 8 Thank you very much. Now, what do you think about the, your, the first competition here and all of these fans? It's just packed here. It's really exciting, actually. Um, it's a lot more fun to compete in a crowd like this than it is when there's a smaller crowd. It's more intense. This is, like, lighter. It's nice to see you guys in red. You're usually in pink or purple, or, or Megan comes up with some unique color. Why the red? Um, I guess because they haven't been in red for a couple years now, and they just needed a change and wanted to bring in school colors. Well, Tracy, welcome to Utah, and welcome to the Utes. I'm going to stand back up. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> back to you, Bill. Thank you, David. Dana Lister, who has to be the strength of this team with Tina Brinkman down, has fallen on her bar routine. Like Bottle is the first youth not to receive a personal record. Now she got a 9.875 on her ball. But Dana Lister did fall off of the uh, bar, and we'll take a look at it right now. The move called a ganger. She turns... Really, the precision that it takes to catch the bar is so incredible. She was not far off. If she were maybe half an inch closer to the bar, she would have caught it. Now Suzanne Metz on her ball. And she is 9.95 Walter, a 5'11 senior, an All-American uh, from Margate, Florida. And boy, did she have a freshman year. She came out and just took the, uh, the, uh, the world by storm. And then she got injured and couldn't compete in the Nationals her freshman year. Here's a look at this first vault. She does a handspring front with a half twist. There's the front. She does a half turn and nearly sticks the landing. She could fight it. You could see him fighting to hold on to that. Lister, 9.25. So they have not been able to really come through the bar routine, Arizona State, with uh, three falls, Lister, Freeland, and Cor Courtney. And they're going to have to count uh, one of them. Model, 9.875. Which is the first youth not to reach her max, which is a 9.975. Suzanne Metz. Her second ball, high hands right. Virtually flawless except for the hop on the landing. It cannot be done any better than that. Unless you were to land without the hop. You know, it's easy to say Suzanne looks so great. However, I think people have just come to expect it from her. She rarely misses. She's a tough competitor. She's never afraid to be aggressive. Handspring front. Pulled up straight on the landing. And over to the bars in Arizona State and Bridget Salmon. Bridget Salmon is a five-foot sophomore from Poinette, Wisconsin. Her best bar is a 9.82 coming into this. She really has a good routine going here, which is important for Arizona. They need to hit everything. There she fell on the disc now. Arizona's going to have a very hard time catching up unless Utah makes a mistake somewhere further on in the competition. Well, they haven't made it in the vault because Suzanne Metz came up with a 9.9 .9 on her vault as the anchor in the vault. And now a replay. This is her release Bridget. move. I'm sorry, her dismount. Double front. She opens up too soon and doesn't make it all the way around. Let's go over to uh, Dave Fox and Coach Greg Marsden in his 20th year. Coach, you said you're doing more coaching this year, and after the, the last fault, I saw you spend a little time there with uh, Suzanne. What, what were your words of wisdom? 
Well, she was going to change vaults, and I just there's a couple of key things that I asked her to think about with each each vault. So I was just making that change between the two vaults. Your assessment after the first row round here? Oh, that's I couldn't have asked for a better starting event this year. They did a great job. All right, keep it going. <laughs> Thanks. I'll Bill? say they did, Greg. 49.225 to start out first meet of the year, and the Utes are off and running in that pursuit of number 10. And we'll be back with Utah on bars right after this. Welcome back to the Huntsman Center. Smith's Food and Drug Centers are happy to relinquish commercial time during tonight's telecast to present several public service messages in this prime time program. The beginning of gymnastics at the University of Utah, the most successful collegiate gymnastics program in the history of the NCAA. It started in 1981 when they won their first national title, and that was an AIAW championship. And then it was uh, eight NCAA championships and looking for number nine in that category this year. But the Magnificent Seven, that's tough. Well, I'd have to argue that they are the most successful collegiate program, period, of any women's sport. They're, I mean, the record speaks for themselves. There is no other program that is trying to win their 10th national title. Well, uh, John Wooden at UCLA in basketball had 10 national titles. Well, I guess we're chasing John Wooden then. <laughs> This has been an extremely successful program. My partner here, Missy Marlowe, is going to compete again. That's unusual. Well, we kind of have to laugh about that, don't we? A week and a half ago, I was asked to compete in a professional meet this next weekend. So, said yes, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, we're getting ready now for the uh, second rotation. Utes on the bars, and it is Delaney who is up on the bars. Kelly Delaney. 9.725 is her career best. But she really had problems as a freshman, just a sophomore, with injuries last year. Kelly is looking respectable during this routine, although I've noticed in form break, she's having a little bit of problems keeping her feet together on some of the elements. A little twisting dismount there. Called a skull circle front with a half or a toe on Branny. And that is not a bad routine to start with. She stayed on, she made it through fairly clean, and that's what you want out of your first competitor up on each event. Going over to, oh, we're going to have a replay of Kelly from our overhead camera. Here's a picture of her dismount. Soul circle, front somersault with a half twist. She almost didn't make that twist all the way around. She'll need to start trying to turn sooner in the air. Bridget Sandman, the five-foot sophomore from Wisconsin. She does a handspring tuck front. As you can see, she put her hands down on the landing. That's a five-tenth deduction, the same as the fall. That's a half a point, and Bridget's not happy with it. Neither is John Speeney. What do the coaches talk about when they walk you up on the ball? Well, it's different for every athlete. It's specific to the girls' vault, and so what helps the girls in practice? He could be saying any number of things. Get up on the springboard, uh, that she needs to drive her heels harder up over the horse, or not to open up so soon. Uh, it really just depends on the vault and the person. Arizona State had a 46.825 in their opening uh, routine on the bars, and that is very difficult for them to come back from. They said if they'd been consistent on the bars, they might have been very competitive tonight, and it's almost three points behind Utah's 49.225 in their opener on the vault. Delaney got a 9.725. New freshman Monica Shaw out of Salt Lake City, Utah, Rocky Mountain Gymnastics, had the same coach I did. Bridget Sandman injured her wrist and will not take a second vault. So we go right straight to Monica Shaw. Monica nearly fell on that shoot half relief move, although she finished well. She covered without stopping, so it won't hurt her too much. She caught a good reverse heck there, and here's her dismount, a flyaway fall. Five foot five freshman who was on the national team for the United States and looked like she was going to be a real international competitor, but son of a gun, she has weak ankles like uh, mine, and she has had two ankle surgeries. Now this is where she stuck it out, huh? You can see she hit the ground there, but she managed to hang on to the bar and keep going, so they'll take a deduction in the form breaks and for hitting the ground, but it will not be five tenths for a fall, which it could have been. Well, with a single event on the vault for Bridget Salmon, she gets a 9.15, and now 
Gina Holler. And that vault will help them out. A little bit low on the landing, but not bad, and she had great distance from the horse. And as we said, Delaney, 9.725 on the bars. And for Kelly Delaney, that ties her career best. Gina Holleran is a 5-2 freshman from Whitehall, Pennsylvania, we mentioned. She's competing in the all-around. A little bit of knees apart in the air. For the most part, a very strong vault. Arizona needs to keep this up now. It's very important that they get good high scores throughout the rest of the week. This is Gina Holleran from Whitehall, Pennsylvania, who wanted to be in a very competitive collegiate gymnastics program after club gymnastics, so she came to see John Speedy, and she is uh, Arizona State Sunday. That was a much better vault. That could compare to some of the vaults that we saw from the year She landed standing straight up and down, just enough bending her knees to not injure herself, and she was in good control on the landing. Here's the little freshman, Tracy Sumner. Tracy Summer reminds me of the Soviet gymnast we covered. Her size, her build. Tracy has a near fall, nearly flawless routine going. You can see her feet together. Her arms are straight when she casts and kips. And she's right on top of the bar in her handstands. Those are the details that the judges are looking at in addition to the big tricks. She's setting up for a dismount. Two giants who should tuck double back and a stuck landing. <laughs> She stuck it pretty good. It really doesn't get much better than that, though. She could add harder difficulties. She could add more tricks, but her execution is perfect. Holleran got a 9.75 on her vault. That's the highest score tonight for the Arizona State Sun Devils. Gina Holleran, 9.75. And now, Carrie Courtney and her vault. The handspring tuck front. A large step on the landing, that's the tenth seduction. The problem with that vault, and we might see it in replay here, is she bent her knees between the time she hit the board and hit the horse. So she'll get a form deduction for that. You need to come onto the horse with locked out tight straight legs and then snap into the tuck. Other than that, it was a clean vault. You can see her knees bent a little bit too early, and they're already bent by the time her hands hit the horse. So she'll get, she'll get a little deduction there and then on the step. This young lady is competing after being involved in a terrible uh, car accident on Friday and released from the hospital Saturday morning. And she said she's just a little stiff. However, Tina Brinkman, who is the star of this Arizona State team, is not just stiff. She has a severe concussion. Well, it says a lot that she's even here. To come out of something like that and have been in the hospital, not only be well enough to do gymnastics, but have the nerve to go ahead and compete and take the pressure really says a lot about her character. Go, Carrie. Come on, Carrie. Carrie Courtney. Much better second oh. vault. Carrie Courtney, Arizona She kept her legs straight as long as she needed Next to, and she had ball better ball control ball on the landing. That should Utah. score two to three tenths higher than her first vault. Now, you want to see somebody who operates on the edge? It's Alyssa Friends on the bars. I mean, she goes right to the edge. Alyssa is a huge bar swinger. When you talk about amplitude, she exemplifies it. There's a reverse hack way above the bar into a straddle back to handstand. She'll come back up to high bar and set up for her dismount. The kip handstand. Giant half pirouette. Front giant through to a Rudy or a front one and a half twist. Very, very good clean bar routine. The youth team, the reason they score well, Bill, is they just don't give the judges any deductions. They can get through the routines cleanly and make them look easy. The judges don't have any choice but to give them good scores. This is Michelle Naya, a five-foot junior out of Union City, California. Very strong boulder. 9.90 is her career best. Under rotated that time. She tried the harder ball. She tried to do it in the pike position. But as you could see, she didn't make it quite all the way around. Now they have a decision to make here, and that's what they're talking about. Here's a replay. You can see she keeps her legs straight in the air, which makes it a lot harder than the tuck front. But it doesn't matter how hard your ball is if you can't land on your feet. So what the coach 
and her need to decide is if she wants to try an easier ball than tuck it or if she wants to try it again and stick with the pike. Her teammate, uh, Carrie Courtney, got a 9.65 on her vault. And now this is uh, Michelle Naya with her second attempt on the ball. Tracy Summer, the freshman on the bar for the Utes, 9.825. I think that's a very fair score for Tracy. Michelle Naya, second ball. It's a study in concentration. It's going to be need to be stronger coming off the board to get a better repulsion off the horse if she wants to make this this time. She did the same vault. She did land it. You can see she bent her knees just a little bit in the air before she hit the mat. It's a great improvement over the last vault. Arizona does not want to have to count a fall at this point. Michelle Naya. Alyssa Friends on the bars had a 9.775, and now it's Suzanne Metz, and she's been close to perfection on the bars. 9.925 is her career best. There's an uprise to handstand, locked elbows, and a full twisting reverse head. Sounded like she might have hit her heel on the bar, although it didn't break her swing, so that's not a deduction. What about her heel? Did it break in? <laughs> Suzanne's tough. I don't think it did. <laughs> Suzanne is recovering still from wrist surgery that she had late in the summer before they came back. And she oh. missed the first couple weeks of practice this year during their two days while she's still recovering from her wrist surgery. Michelle Naya got a 9.70 in her vault. And with uh, Suzanne Metz, dismount here now on the bars. There's a giant swing through to a tuck double back, knees together, that's what Suzanne is known for, is her perfect form, and she pulls it straight up at the end. And now we go back over to the vault, and young Katie Freeland, the junior, she's an All-American vaulter, 9.92 last year. Oh! Handspring front with a half, beautiful vault. She looks happy with that, <laughs> as well she should be. She landed standing straight up and down, she didn't take any steps, and she had clean form. That uh, John Spini's big smile tells you he's happy with it, right. too. Right. The judges will be hard-pressed to find many deductions with that. You can see she gets up off the board. Legs are together. Toes are pointed in the air. She spots the landing right there. You can see the ground coming around. And because she's high enough, she can prepare for the landing without taking any steps. All-American Walter. Mets had a 9.8. On her bars routine, it's below her record of 9.925, a 9.80 for Suzanne Pitts. And now Sandy Woolsey, the defending NCAA bars champion, but she's not going to use her, uh, her big routine because she has a fantastic dismount that she won't be using in this first meet of the season. Well, it is early. They still have a lot of training time between now and regionals and uh, the national championships. So the important thing is to stay healthy and be able to make it through the season. So if this is the time to water down routines a little bit, they're going to do it. It's a front giant, half pirouette, full pirouette to a shoot half to handstand. Very, very difficult combination to control the turns like that on high bar. To a kip cast handstand, another release move, a reverse hex. Had a small form break on that cast hand down there, and here's her dismount. Oh. Very easy for her, a tight double back. Let's go over to Dave Fox and Suzanne Metz. Uh, Bill, Suzanne, you, you, we were sitting here during that routine, and you and you mumbled, make up a routine. She's never done it before in her life. What's going on here? Uh, that's something you adapt as you compete over the years. Like when you're little, if you screw up, you just fall. Now you kind of figure out that if you screw up, like she was supposed to go the other way, but nobody's supposed to know that. So she made it up and went over the low bar and did the, the skills she's supposed to do later. She improvised and it paid off. Oh, definitely. Everything seems to be coming up roses for you guys tonight. What's the, what's the deal? I think the preseason, I mean, pushed everybody, and it was like the, such rush for the first meet. It really pushed the, the people that didn't think they had to do much or was like could sit back if they were scared of an event, and it really pushed. Like Alyssa, big hype has been that she doesn't like ball. She nailed it. I mean, yeah. We have to at this point. We have no choices. We'll keep it up. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Bill. Thank you very much. And Katie Freeland, uh, the young junior vaulter, the All-American vaulter for Arizona State, came up with a 9.925, and that is the highest mark that the Arizona State Sun Devils have received tonight, a 9.925 vault by Katie Freeland. And just listening to Mets talk, you know what kind of a competitor she is. She's a tough one. 
she is very <laughs> tough. Uh, downright intimidating, I would dare say. She is definitely someone you want on your side, on your team. We'll be back impression. after this. Utah is leading by 3.15 points over Arizona State after two rotations now. 98.150 to 95. And now we go up with Arizona State on the floor. And the Utes will be on the kind of the scariest uh, rotation, the scariest event in all of gymnastics, the beam. And yet some people just relish it. I remember when you were going into the Olympics, you qualified with a great beam routine which was kind of ironic because that was the event that ruined a lot of meets for me when I was younger. It's something you really have to learn how to compete on. You're up there alone, you can feel 10,000 pairs of eyes watching your routine and it can be extremely hard to concentrate, which is why these girls do so much work with sports psychologists learning the concentration skills they need to stay on. Kelly Delaney. She's setting up for her tumbling series. It's required. Back handspring, layout, step out. And I really didn't think she'd be able to save that. She was arched pretty far back. She let her hips turn to the side. She managed to pull it up. It's another required move. Two dance skills in a row. She did straddle jump, straddle jump. Not only do you have to do it, but you have to hit a complete split in the air in order to get credit for it. Just about every year I mentioned that I tried to do a stand-up once on tape, standing on the beam, and I could not stay up there. There's just something about being Well, there. it's just, it's tiny. You don't realize how small four inches <laughs> is unless you're standing up there looking down at the mat. But on the floor, you can stand in a four-inch space and not have any problem. <laughs> Can't fall off the floor. Maybe that's it. There's another required element. She did a dance move combined with a gymnastics move. She's staying up there. Kelly's doing a good job not falling, but she does look nervous. She's had some wobbles at the end of nearly every move she's made. There's her dismount, a swing through, or a gainer, tuck pull. Okay, let's go over to Dave Fox and Coach John Speedy of Arizona State. Thank you, Bill. Coach, um, along with the fine performances, a couple of tumbles, you've already got an injury, uh, the nerves, the crowd, what, what is it? Well, I think right now we're trying to piece together uh, a strong lineup. We lost our top all-around uh, just before we came up here in a car accident, Tina Brinkman. And we put kids that aren't ready in events. Uh, we lost another bar worker and another vaulter with a cortisone shot to the shoulder last week. And uh, I know it's the first meet, but we got a long season. So I just want to get to the meet and, and, and look as good as we can at this point because uh, uh, down the line, I feel that that it's going to pay off. I don't need to beat my kids up early. Uh, I want to look good, but I'll do what I have to to keep them safe. You got one on the floor right now. I'll let you go. Right, thank Thanks, you. Coach. Bill? Michelle Naya. We saw Michelle step out of bounds on that first pass. You couldn't see the white lines on the floor in the TV screen, but she stepped over the white line with her front foot, so that'll be a 10th deduction, although it was a good tumbling pass. Second tumbling pass, round off that hand, spring full twist. Not one of the harder ones we'll see. She's competing in three events tonight. Uh, the vault, the uh, floor, and the bars. Her third tumbling pass, you can see her standing in the corner trying to get her breath. These floor routines are very tiring. She has a front hand spring front full, but doesn't quite make it to her feet. And Arizona really cannot afford to have any misses at this point. Michelle Naya. Michelle Naya. On the floor for Arizona State. five-foot junior. Next up on the beam. And now we've got the beam for the University of Utah. And Delaney came up with a 9.625 on the beam. Kelly did a good job of staying on. I think that score might be just a little bit high considering how large some of the wobbles were. But at this point in the season, when B maybe isn't your favorite or your best event, it is important that you just stay on. Now, Alyssa Friends really tried a difficult mount on the beam. That is a very hard mount. You don't have much space to work with. I think her back might be a little sore tomorrow oh. trying to save that one. She was nearly bent in half. And here she sets up for her tumbling series. Back handspring step out. Three back handspring step outs in a row. She did a much harder series at Nationals last year. Probably isn't quite ready to compete at this point in the season. 
9.9 is her career high on the beam. A side aerial, the cartwheel without hands. As she moves into a full turn, that's a required element. You must do at least a full turn. A straddle jump into a split jump quarter turn. There's her required two dance elements in a row. It's called a sheep jump. Even though it looks simple, it's actually pretty scary because you have to throw your head backwards in order to get full credit for it. Kind of a unique back shoulder roll. She's extremely flexible as you can see. One thing that really separates athletes is when they leap, you can tell the flexible athletes from the non-flexible ones by the degree of split in the air. Alyssa Friends and her dismount, a second team All-America for the University of Utah. And now on the floor for ASU. Kim Kiever, 5'3 freshman. They call her the Las Vegas Special. She's an engineering and architecture major. Michelle Naya scored 9.05. First tumbling pass, round off back handspring, tuck, double oh back. Boy. Way up in the air, and she landed without a problem. Kim Kiever is a extremely good athlete, according to Coach Spini. He said he had to change some of her technique when she came to ASU, and she's just a freshman. Now, that's not easy to do, Bill. When girls come in to the college scene and they've been doing the sport for so long, a lot of those habits and a lot of that technique is really set in your head and the way you do things. And it can take years to break the bad habits and try to fix some of the moves. Front hand spring, front full, same mistake the first competitor had. She landed short, that's 5 tenths deduction, which is really too bad after an otherwise very good and clean routine. That also means right now that Arizona is going to have to count at least one fall on floor. They're only competing five performers, and all five have to count. So in that now you case, have they'll six. have to count two falls. Yes. Tracy Summer. And uh, now on the beam, the freshman, Tracy Summer. Tracy will be an immediate crowd favorite after this competition. The fans at Utah are very knowledgeable and they know who the incoming freshmen are. And a lot of times you don't expect too much out of freshmen. And to have them come in, compete all around, and not only compete every event, but do extremely well. Now she qualified for the 92 Olympic trials. That's not surprising, having watched her. She's clean, she has hard tricks, and she's got a very aggressive attitude towards me. The straddle press to handstand. You believe the strength in that young lady, 92 pounds. You wouldn't think she has it in her. She looks so tiny. She's not that bulky, strong body type. She's very thin and lean. Front hand spring. Alyssa Friends with a 9.375 as she missed her mount on the beat. Two back hand springs to a oh, layout oh. step up. Landed perfectly, straight legs, pointed toes in the air. You can't, as a coach, ask for it to be any better than that. She's tied for second in the all-around right now. Suzanne Metz is leading with that 9-9 in the ball. Well, her competition experience is extensive. To compete in something as hard as Olympic trials tells you that she's been at a high level for a long time in this sport. So I would imagine that she feels awfully comfortable up there. And she certainly looks like it as she goes through her routine. I'll tell you, this is, this is a pretty knowledgeable crowd here. <laughs> she's getting a, almost a standing ovation. Look at this, she does get a standing ovation. Talk about a crowd pleaser.
<laughs> Tracy Summer, four foot nine freshman out of Chatham, New Jersey, psychology major. Just look at her dismount and gain her tuck full, landed without a step. And the judges are thinking to themselves, what are we going to deduct on this routine? That's what they're saying. I can read their minds. Let's go to the floor now. And Gina Holleran, who is a freshman Arizona State, who, because of the injury to Tina Brinkman, is having to compete in the all-around herself. Bill they changed the score on Michelle Naya from a 9.05 to an 8.95. That's unusual, Bill, to see a score go down. Oftentimes, they'll increase it a tenth or half a tenth of a point. No explanation. Could be because of the step out of bounds. Does somebody miss? That's a neutral deduction. Okay. Okay, second tumbling pass, round off whip through the two back handsprings to a double full. Right now, Tracy Summer is leading in the all-around. She just got a 9.90. That was an absolutely beautiful beam routine. The music and the routine will slow down a little bit in most routines before the third tumbling pass just to let the gymnasts get their breath back and set up. They usually use their toughest passes early. Right. There's a double full. Her teammate, Kim Kiever, had a 9.10 on her floor routine. And that's Gina Holleran. On the floor for Arizona State University. Let's go down with Dave Fox and a former All-American and now assistant coach with the Utah Gymnastics Program, Megan McCunniff Marsden. Thank you, Bill. And first of all, Megan, I think you've got a real find in this young Tracy Summer. What an athlete. Well, I think we've all known it for a while, but this is the first time everybody else gets to realize it, too. You're, the coach, your husband's a little bit of a sandbagger. He came into this meet, you know, kind of crying some tears. We're hurt. We're banged up. We're young. You're running away with the thing. Well, I mean, you never know. And I was right there with him. But, you know, this group of girls, we may be small, but the seven that are here are quality athletes, no question. Thanks, Megan. Bill? Oh, we had a very difficult, very strong Sandy Woolsley's mount on the beam. And this is Summer's score, a 9.90 for her first beam routine ever as a Ute. Young freshman, this is Sandy Woolsey. Two back hands through to lay out, step out, slight wobble. She let her front foot come up. She needs to plant her front foot and not let it move from the beam. Sandy nearly fell on her beam mount. She managed to pull it back on. She needs to finish with strong skills that don't have a lot of wobbles at the end if she wants to score well. Sandy is usually very consistent on the beam. I don't think she'll have a problem doing that. Plague with very painful shin splints. Where the covering of the bone actually comes apart from the bone. So in the vault and the floor, she only works out once a week. But she can perform, as you can see, on the beam every day. You are so that little touch with the toe tells you you're at the back of the beam. Right. And the bell, if you can hear it on the TV, they ding the bell. That means she has 10 seconds to get off the beam. The minimum amount of time is a minute 10. The longest a routine can go is a minute 30. Otherwise, the dismount does not count, and that's a huge deduction. So it's important to get off the beam. Well, that's who Tracy Summer is battling for the all-around title tonight is Sandy Woolsey, along with Suzanne Metz. And Woolsey just puts on a nice beam performance. Katie Freeland, Arizona State. Very dramatic four. Holler a 9.50 on her floor routine. There's a pike front through to a pike double back. She's as powerful on floor as she is on vault. The judge in the background did raise that yellow flag. That means her back foot went out. So although it was a great tumbling pass, she'll lose one tenth for going out of bounds. <laughs> Back handspring, tuck double back, 
gorgeous landing. She's very flexible. You can see when she leaps that her legs are in a complete split. That weighs a lot with the judges as they're watching. Coach John Spini says uh, his assistant, Tracy Mosier, does all of the choreography for the uh, girls' floor routine. Whereas University of Utah, they used to have a paid choreographer with uh, Mary Wright, and then the NCAA uh, ruled that it was legal to have a paid special choreographer that wasn't an assistant coach. So the girls actually pay out of their own pocket to have Mary or someone else help them with their choreography, which is uh, legal in the NCAA. Woolsey on the beam, 9.75. That was a great floor routine for Katie. She needs, she should be, should be happy with that. Katie Freeland of Arizona State, and now to Megan Cottle, the University of Utah on the beam. Jump through a plant's position, two middle splits. Kind of a unique little slide back down. Generally, the beam routines won't change a whole lot from year to year, although it's nice to try to add something that's a little bit different, a little more unique, and of course, any added difficulty doesn't hurt as well. Here's back handspring, layout step out, and she was off out of the first back handspring on that one. And Megan gets some encouragement from the crowd. So Utah now will have to count a fall on beam as well. Although Megan usually isn't phased by beam, I don't think she'll have a problem finishing the routine well. It's important when you have to count a fall that the rest of the routine is good just to keep the score as high as possible. The scissor leap through to a gainer layout. That's the required gymnastics and dance element combined. She was determined to stay on on that layout. She's setting up for her dismount. Concentrating on the end of the beam, excuse me, for a scissor leap. Now the dismount, gain her full. <laughs> Not a bad routine, but she will be disappointed with the fall. Her career high has been a 9.80 on the beam. And now we go to Dana Lister, who is an All-American, second team for Arizona State out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now on the floor, she has a 9.85. Freeland had a 9.625. Remember, she stepped out. Great routine, but 9.625 for Katie Freeland. First tumbling pass. Round up back handspring, a lay-in pike. Again, she went out of bounds. Arizona is really going to have to work on their landings or cut their steps back into the tumbling passes so that if they do have to take an extra step, which is a tenth seduction in and of itself, so they don't lose another tenth for going over the lines also. That's They've got good choreography and good dance, but they need to clean up these landings if they want to score well. That's the third performer for ASU who has stepped out of bounds. One routine might not be too bad, but when it's a problem as a team, it can really add up to your team's score. Dana is a great dancer. We used to compete together when we were younger, and it's neat to see these girls that I used to know finishing up their careers also. That's a little Scottish flavor to a Megan Cottle, 9.35. The front full landing. She was a little also, low also, but she managed to save it. And into her ending pose. Now, Dana does have the Arizona State career record on the beam, which is their last event coming up with a 10. Her best here is a 9.85. But with the step out, it'll be less than her best. And now Suzanne Metz on the beam. 9.925 is her career high. A simple mount just to get on the beam safely. There's a scissor side leap. Suzanne is pro possibly one of the best gymnasts in the country at concentrating and being aggressive up there. Oftentimes you'll see gymnasts get on the beam, they look tentative, their movements aren't too big or, uh, or flow too well. Suzanne certainly does not have that problem. Back handspring, layout, into a back handspring. She's a little bit off, she pulled it up without a wobble. 
Suzanne attacks the bee. Shows no fear. None at all, nor does she on any other event. Scissor leap due to a wolf jump. Slight wobble on the landing. And there's the warning for her dismount. Swing through, tuck, fall. Suzanne Bennett on the beam for the University. Let's go to Dave Fox now and a young lady who is, uh, oh, he hasn't gotten her right yet. We're hoping she's over congratulating Suzanne Metz. But Amy Trepanier, famous not only for the billboard, but also famous, of course, for being a... Uh, Seven-time Utah All-American, and now she's with Dave Fox. Amy Trepanier is not performing tonight, and you'll find out why. First of all, how's the back holding up? Well, it's doing pretty good right now, actually. You, you, I'm sure it's tough to have to watch everybody else perform here, but you seem to have quite a role in terms of cheerleading, inspiration, whatever the case may be. Well, I love gymnastics, and I love watching my teammates and cheering them on. It's the best thing next to competing. I thought it was funny while uh, uh, Megan was on the beam, Suzanne wouldn't look. She was looking the other way while you guys were all cheering. Is this some kind of ritual she goes through? Well, I think she just likes to have her time to concentrate and focus on her routine and get ready for her event. It looked like, it looked like the coach was giving her a little play-by-play. But, uh, but it worked yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, it worked out for the best. Good luck with the back. Thanks. Thanks. Bill? Thank you, Dave. A bulging disc on the back for Amy Trepanier is taking her out of competition, but she's still working out. She's still staying in shape, and we'll be back with more right after this. This is the Smith's Challenge Cup, but Smith's Food and Drug Centers relinquish commercial time during this telecast to present several public service messages in this prime time program. And Tracy Summer, the freshman, is leading in the all-around with a 29.525, Suzanne Metz 29.50, and Kelly uh, Sandy Woolsey 29.375. That 975 beam hurt her, and it's a uh, 25 hundredths of a lead for the young freshman over Suzanne Metz, the senior, for the all-around championship tonight. And now we go to a very difficult final routine for any visitor, and that is to finish on the beam, and this is Holleran of Arizona State. It can be very hard to finish on the beam. It typically is the hardest event to compete on, and depending on if you're having a good or a competition, <laughs> good or a close, good or a bad and competition. You know, and you know you've got to yeah. stick it to, to win it, then it, it puts added pressure on it. If you're a tough competitor, you do better. If you're uh, afraid or nervous on the beam, it can be worse. This is a freshman for Arizona State. This is her first all-around competition. And this is her fourth event tonight. She had a 975 on the ball, a 965 on the bars, a 950 on the floor, and now on the beam. And she's really doing a good job. She was just a hair off on her back cam springs to a layout. She pulled it up with only a small wobble. There's a standing back handspring step out. And she's moving really well. She's not too slow. She's not tentative. She looks like she's comfortable. She's a good one for Coach Speedy. She has 10 seconds to dismount and a punch front full to end with. That's Gina Holleran of Arizona State University. And now we go to the floor, the final event for the University of Utah, and Kelly Delaney, the sophomore who was injured for most of her freshman year, but had a 9.650 as her career high on the floor, is there right now. And she has uh, scored in two events over her previous personal records of last year. She had a 9.625 in the beam, 9.40 was her record. She had a 9-8 on the vault, 9-5 was her previous record. And now on the floor, Kelly Delaney. Utah has always been known for their excellent choreography. They get dynamic, they have exciting music, and choreography to match up. There's a lay-in pike, double back, a stretch body position on the first one, piked on the second, landed without a problem.
crowd getting into it. The second tumbling pass. Front handspring, tuck front full. She was in trouble on that front handspring. I think she slowed her run down a little too much to try to control it. The crowd is enjoying this music, clapping along. You'll hear some familiar music as the Utes compete on the floor a little later on. Round off that handspring, full twist. Not the hardest last tumbling pass we'll see, but at this point in the meet, all they need to do is finish up cleanly <laughs> without mistakes. 38.35 is her career high all around. I think she'll break that tonight. And her career on the floor is a 9.65. And now we go to the uh, beam where Holleran has finished up with a 38.525 for Gina Holleran. There's two back handsprings through to a layout step out. She kept her feet together on the second one, which adds a lot of difficulty to that pass. It's a scissor leap, little land, wobble on the landing through to a cat leap full turn. The required full turn. She's moving very well. And again, she too looks comfortable up there. Jennifer McKenna is a 5'3 junior who is competing in Just Beam tonight out of Columbus, Ohio. But the freshman, Gina Holleran, has finished up with a 9.5, 9.625 on the beam. So her first all-around score is 38.525 for Gina Holleran of Arizona State. Jennifer McKenna is a junior. Very difficult beam routine. I'm surprised to see her do another layout, a round-off layout. That's an extremely hard tumbling pass on the beam after doing her two-back handsprings to the layout earlier in the start of the season, or start of the routine. And now we go to the floor, and Alyssa friends for the University of Utah. Alyssa has a personal record of 9.90 on the floor. there is a conference that means that the two judges did not come up with scores that were within enough range of each other if they're too far off more than a couple tenths off they need to talk and decide and try to see where they were off and that's on Kelly Delaney's uh, floor routine right well they got the wave going here in the Huntsman Center Only at Utah would you have a crowd large enough and enthusiastic enough to do that. Next along the floor for the University of Utah, Alyssa Friends. And now Alyssa Friends and her floor routine. We mentioned that uh, uh, up until two years ago, and Delaney's floor scorer is a 9525. Alyssa is a great dancer. She's flexible, her leaps are beautiful. She's funky and sharp. Very, very entertaining to watch. She'll do a lay and fight. Double back. But up until two years ago, the Utes had a choreographer on staff that they paid to help with the choreography. And uh, the NCAA ruled it illegal. So now the young women pay out of their own pocket for assistance, and most of them use Mary Wright, but also Suzanne Metz and uh, a former performer last year, Meredith King, have done a lot of choreography for the uh, for the. Right. Team. Both Suzanne and Meredith are extremely talented choreographers, and I can speak from experience. It's not easy to make up floor routines, especially ones that are unique 
and different from, from all the other Florida teams you see. And Suzanne and Meredith are very talented in that department, which is lucky for these girls. That's Jennifer McKenna's uh, beam score, 9.625 for Arizona State. That's the only event she's competing in tonight. And you're watching Alyssa Friend out of Huntington Beach, California, junior, second team All-American. The last time we passed, she looked a little bit tired, wasn't moving too fast, although it's so easy for her, there were no deductions at all. Hey, the crowd getting into this floor routine, it is a, uh, an event in gymnastics that you can really feel free to join in. You're a little concerned when they're on the beam right. or on the bar. Right, you need to be bars. quiet on the beam, but floor, <laughs> floor is fun. Today we go to the beam for Arizona State University. Kim Kiever. And her best beam is uh, nine point. Well, this was when she was an elite because she's a very strong beam performer. She's a freshman. Delaney has a all-around score of 38.70. So she does beat her personal best. That is an incredible score to start the season out with. We have a really wonderful beam routine going on here. She hasn't wobbled since she mounted, except for right there. I think I jinxed her. That was an illusion. This is the an illusion. Very hard to do. The Las Vegas special for Arizona State, Kim Kiever. Backhand spring to quarter turn. And this is her strongest event. The crowd is so pleased with Utah's performance, they're starting to appreciate the other team more. Being very generous with their applause and their appreciation for what the girls are doing. Well, a five-point lead in gymnastics is like 25-point lead in basketball. And that's what the youths enjoy after three. They just mount round off, full twist. That will help Arizona's beam score. Next up on the floor for the University of Utah, Sandy Wolsey. Alyssa Friends and her floor routine 9.60. Well, now they've changed it to a 38.35 for Delaney. Oh, well, that's Friends. Alyssa Friends. 38.35 and she finishes in the all around. Round up again, swing tight over oh. that. Sandy is in the best shape she has been in coming to the University of Utah. She started this year. Not bad for someone who can't practice vault and floor because of shin splits. <laughs> 9.9 9 is her career best. And he comes to Utah out of Littleton, Colorado. That was supposed to be a layout step out. She bent her knees in touch. It's not a deduction because she didn't have any four breaks, but she is capable of doing a harder pass, and I'm sure she will if she can get her shin sealed up so that she can practice more and work out. You watch her at practice, and she's like a chorus line with those uh, ankle warmers. They they're actually keep her uh, shin splints and her bones warm while she practices and helps her out. It isn't really a support more than it is just a temperature gauge. And as much as I loved Sandy's floor routine last year, I think she's topped it with this one. Her dance is unique, it's exciting, and it's hard to do. Sandy Woolsey, we mentioned she had a 9-9 as her previous record. Kim Kiever came in with a strong beam performance for ASU, 9.625. And now Michelle Naya. Michelle has had a 9-9 on the beam before. Oh, nice. And there's her dance combination. A leap to an immediate tergite. She sets up for her tumbling series. Swing through back handspring, back handspring, layout step out. A little bit of bent arms when she made contact with the beam. She needs to get her arms straight on her back handspring. Other than that, it was done well. Scissor leap, cat leap, half turn, pike jump. Side aerial. An 
Arizona is finishing up really well on the beam. I'm impressed that they didn't let the first couple of events and their misses get to them. They're really holding it well, holding it together well up there. Well, Speedy hopes that he can return to the top six in NCAA competition this year. This is one of the old rivalries for the University of Utah in the 80s. And they're just renewing it. She's met all of her requirements. Now she just needs to get off the beam and stick the landing on her dismount. The punch, Rudy, or a front one and a half the twist, is one step on the land. The beam for Arizona State University. Michelle Nye of Arizona State. From the University of Utah, Tracy and Sandy Summer. Woolsey came up with a 9.75 on the floor. And now here's Tracy Summer, who happens to be leading in the all-around and her first ever floor routine. Called a Valdez full pirouette on the beam there. A little problem at night. A little problem. She managed to stay on. This music is awfully familiar. Almost makes me sad to watch. This is the same floor music that Missy Marlowe performed in NCAA competition with. First time we pass a land pike. Can't be much better than that. She could keep her feet together a little bit more in the air. Otherwise, it's flawless. Sandy Woolsey has a new career all-around total of 39.125. precise with her movement. Every finger is in place, her toes are always pointed, and she has no form breaks. There's two whips, through to a full twist. It looks easy, it looks like she's not even trying, and she doesn't look a bit tired. Tracy is in great shape. Well, Tracy is cut in the traditional Russian gymnast shape. Last tumbling pass, round off back handspring, double full, and Tracy has had a phenomenal meet today. <laughs> She's leading in the all-around. This is the final event. The crowd loves her, and I'm sure the coaches feel pretty good about her at this point, too. Not only did she come in as a freshman and compete at every event and made the lineup, but she may well have just won the meet. Tracy Summer in her first ever all-around competition at the University of Utah, and only the second freshman for the Utes ever to go all-around in her first meet. The first one was Kristen Knoyer. Naya had a 9.675 in her beam routine for Arizona State, and now it's Katie Freeland. Very strong approach to the beam. 985 is her personal best on the beam. Two back handspring step out to a layout. She needs to keep her front foot down on the landing so she doesn't pull up and have the wobble. It's a scissor leap with good extension and a beautiful straddle jump. She's really carried this team tonight. She's rushing her movements just a little. I think that's why she wobbled on the layout also. She stepped out and got a little bit ahead of herself on the landing on that full turn. She needs to calm down and move just a little bit slower. I can spring through to a pike jump. Again, small wobble. She had the highest score for any of the Sun Devils tonight with a 9.925 on the ball. Summer just got a 9.80 on the floor, the highest score for any youth so far on the floor, and should secure her. Suzanne Metz is coming up in a battle for the all-around title. And another Rudy dismount, one step on the lane. Great. Well, she finishes with a Tracy Summer, finishes with an all-around of 39.325. As a freshman, her first all-around ever, Katie Freeland and her dismount on the beam. Her best all-around has been 38.75. And now let's go to 
Uh, Dave Fox and Sandy Woolsey, who just beat her personal best in the all-around with a 39.125. Well, first of all, you're looking at the feet of Sandy Woolsey, the feet that have been uh, somewhat injured. We understand you've only been able to work on the floor like once a week. You come out here and you nail it like that. What's up? Well, they say that performance is 90% mental and 10% uh, aerobically fit, and I'm here to test the theory. You mentioned 90% mental. It's really easy to stay into this thing and stay focused with this crowd, isn't it? Oh, yeah. The fans are great. They're ready to play up to, and I love it. Take care of those feet. Thank you, Thank you so much. Bill? Thank you, Dave. Megan Cottle now on the floor, where she has had just a tenth off of perfection, a 9.90 score. Megan has now nailed both of her first two tumbling passes. And the crowd particularly enjoys this floor routine because they can clap along to it. This is the music world champion Shannon Miller used for the last two years. And it fits her personality to a T. Katie Freeland had a 9.65 on her burn beam routine and finishes with a 37.95 all around. Megan Cottle has got one going here. She certainly does. I have yet to see any deductions in this floor routine. Judges are going to have to look hard again. Double full landing. It can't be done much better than that. Megan Cottle. For the of Utah. Now the highest score Utes have on the floor is the 9-8-0 by Tracy Summer. And now we go over Dana to the Lister. bar and Dana Lister, who has been perfection on the beam. Dana has a 10 for the ASU record on the beam. And previously on the beam was Freeland with a 9.65. As you were saying, she's had a tan on beam before, and even back in club gymnastics when we used to compete together, Dana was known around the country for her work on the balance beam. There's her tumbling series. Two back hand springs, two layouts. She did a good job of pulling that up and staying on after having a miss. It's easy to get psyched out and not finish so well after a big mistake. But she didn't let that happen. Got to see her at practice. She was taking control of the whole Arizona State team with the loss of Tina Brinkman. She stepped right into that void. I'm not surprised. You know, that's what you hope you can count on from your seniors also. Done. She's an All-American for Arizona State University. And cartwheel swing through layout. Too bad she got the call. Otherwise, it was a very clean, strong reason. Megan Cottle got a 9.825 for the best score on the floor so far for the Utes. And now Suzanne Metz, the anchor leg of the floor event for the Utes, and very dramatic one it is. She tries to look me. For someone so pretty, she does a good job. <laughs> and she dances with the same intensity. Her movements are huge. She uses her arms. She's one of the best, most expressive dancers in the country. And it has showed up in the way she's placed at nationals on floor. First time we pass to be a lay-in pike, a double back, stretched on the first and piped on the second. As usual, she hits it right on. Now she did have Mary Wright help her a little bit with this, and then she refined it as she's one of the choreographers on the team and helps all the uh, the other performers as well in Utah. But I said it's a little funky. She said, well, it's got a little funk in it, but it's mainly dramatic. Right. The music is standing in motion. Here's her second tumbling pass, front handspring Rudy. Front tumbling has really become more popular on the floor as the Federation of International Gymnastics increased value for it after the last Olympics. So that's why you're seeing more front tumbling lately. I think that 
that was the funky part right there. There it was. <laughs> Just enough. Your last tumbling pass. Front somersault. Through to double full. And typical, typically of Suzanne. Another great routine. Suzanne Metz, All American, University of Utah. And the reason they don't really smile when they run off is they're too tired. It's not that they're not happy. All to the West Tunnel area. Well, this has been a very, very enjoyable meet for the University of Utah. It's been the debut of a young lady named Tracy Summer and a tremendous performance by the Magnificent Seven. Injuries have taken the team that normally is 10 or 11 deep, and Utah has always had depth down to a Magnificent Seven, and that means there's only one sub on the bench to come in in any event. Lister got a 9-2-5 on her final. 925 as she fell on the beam and she finishes Arizona State finishes with a 189.95 we're back with Utah's finish and Suzanne met score right after this the University of Utah finishes up this first meet of the year the Smith's Challenge Cup with a 195.475. That's an outstanding first meet score. Arizona State with a 189.95. And we had both teams with some performers. Their top guns were very, very weak. And uh, I mean, they were out. They were injured. They couldn't perform. Well, Greg is the master at downplaying his team. He does it at the first of the year. He does it during the season. And he does it again when they have all of their press time at nationals. He would much rather get the word out that they're struggling a little and have everyone beat those expectations. Okay, that's, this is the Smith's Challenge Cup, and Dave Fox has somebody representing Smith's that I think you all know. <laughs> a very familiar face in Salt Lake City, Shelly Thomas. And for Smith's a big supporter of University Ladies of Utah sports, but tell me what a meet like this means to your organization. We're so proud to be affiliated with these amazing athletes. They are an inspiration to young women and young men everywhere. We're just thrilled to be a part of it. It must be very gratifying, too, to see a crowd like this. It's tremendous. We were expecting a crowd and uh, we're thrilled that everyone has come out and it's thrilling to see how the sport has grown in the state. And you expect to see them all at Smith's tomorrow, correct? Oh, uh, immediately after the game, if possible, day. Now, be honest. Do you miss the uh, the other side, you know, being in front of the camera every night? You know, honestly, I don't. Uh, everyone asks me that and I don't. It's been a wonderful three years. I'm looking forward to, uh, to more work at Smith's. Give us a call if you change your mind. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Suzanne Metz came through with a 9.90, her second of the night, to win the all-around champion. Suzanne Metz, 39.40, not quite the 39.60, which is her career best. And Tracy Summer comes in with the second place in the all-around, a 39.325. And then Sandy Woolsey, 39.125. And from Arizona State, a freshman, Gina Holleran, with a 38.525. Outstanding performance by two freshmen in their first all-around competition. Shows a lot of grit. The girls come into college with a lot of competition experience, but not always with a lot of experience in front of a crowd this size. And only at Utah could you get 10,000 people in the stands at a televised meet. University of Utah women's gymnastics program has produced the NCAA record attendance for any women's meet. And I think the outstanding performer of tonight's meet went to Tracy Summer, the freshman, with that uh, 39.325. And I'll tell you, she Tracy really did uh, electrify the audience. She had a 9.80 in the ball, a 9.825 in the bars, a 9.90 in the beam, a 9.80 in the four for 39.325. The young lady from Chat, New Jersey, her first year at Utah, and only the second. Only the second youth ever to go all around in her freshman year, Kristen Knoyer, was the first. And she has the NCAA the record all around championship number. Is Arizona State University. And now the presentation of the Smith Challenge Cup, being presented by Shelly Thomas of Smith. Is the University of Utah.
Accepted by Suzanne Metz, the all-around champ tonight. And what a performance by the University of Utah. Their first night out with a 195.475. And a good part of it, according to Coach Marsden, can be attributed to this fantastic crowd that comes to Utah women's gymnastics. Helps us in, in every aspect from recruiting uh, uh, to performance and uh, probably last year's championship was no better example there probably is no better example than what happened at nationals in my mind there's no question that the crowd was a part of our comeback uh, from almost taking ourselves out of the meet on the first event last year you know to winning the thing you know on the last you know performance of the night uh, uh, never have in gymnastics has I s have I seen a crowd play as big a role uh, in the performance of a group of athletes as our fans did last year at the championships. Suzanne Metz with a 9.9 .9 on the final routine of the night wins the all-around championship in the first meet on the uh, Smith's Challenge Cup. And Suzanne said it was dramatic and she tries to get that dramatic look when she starts. And she said there's a little bit of funk in it, and we saw just a very little bit. We saw heavy drama with Suzanne Metz, who is the strength of the Utah program this year. Amy Trepanier trying valiantly to come back, a seven-time All-American with a bulging disc in her back. And they don't know when she can return to performing or when she would leave it, when it could happen, when the back would go out. But she stayed in good shape, and she's going to keep trying it. But this young lady owns all four events because she doesn't back down to anything. Okay, let's go over to Dave Fox and the coach, the winningest coach in women's collegiate gymnastics. And the coach's son as well, Dakota and Greg Marson. And congratulations, you came into the meet somewhat cautious. You gotta be ecstatic. Well, you know, we're still thin and we've gotta stay healthy all year, but I've said, you know, all preseason that it's a great, talented group of girls. We just don't have as many as we're used to having. And so we've gotta be careful and try to keep everybody healthy through the season. But if, you know, if we do, we're gonna be very competitive. A couple of things stand out. Uh, uh, that your freshman Tracy Summer, you know, a great performance tonight. Suzanne, as usual, seemed to nail everything. Well, you know, everybody did a great job tonight, and uh, but Tracy especially, I think. What a, I knew she was going to be great for us. I didn't know how she'd handle the transition to college gymnastics, but obviously she didn't miss a beat. Would you call her a recruiting coup? <laughs> I'd say that's an understatement. Coach, congratulations. Way to go. Thank you. See you, youngster. All right, Bill. Thank you, David. Well, he has had many recruiting coups in his college career, and one of them is right here in Missy Marlowe, because you came from the from uh, the Olympics to the University of Utah. I came straight out of the Olympics, so there's a big difference here because I was not very good my freshman year, and I had to work my way back up. Uh, Tracy obviously isn't in that situation. She came out, almost won the meet against the girls that have been on two and three national championship teams. So. She's not going to start out slow and work her way up. She's already there. Well, you had kind of a relaxing period. You wanted to relax. You may have been burned out at the end of the Olympics. I have rushed it a little bit. I went through a period after the Olympics where I, at first I wanted to take the time off, and three months later I thought, boy, this is really boring. You know, there, there's nothing that I'm working for. There's nothing to compete for, and I didn't really know how to handle that too well. So I came to the U early. And I think it was a little bit earlier than what I was ready for. Although, uh, now looking back, you know, I learned a lot that year about um, how hard I like to work and what I like to do. And, and I got, I was very, very out of shape and I had a very disappointing year, but I was able to come back from that. So I learned a lot about myself. Not only was she able to come back from that, but she performed perfect tens on all apparatus. She wiped out the entire field. She became the Broderick Award winner as symbolic of the greatest female athlete in the NCAA that year. And then she won one of seven awards, usually all seven go to men, of athletes in the NCAA. And uh, she has been, as they've asked me many times, who is the number one athlete you have covered in 25 years of covering Utah athletics? She's sitting next to me. We'll be back.
The University of Utah holds the NCAA record for scoring with a 197.02. They have a real nice opening event on their pursuit of the 10th national title tonight with a 195.475 to Arizona State's 189.95. And they had problems with falls and with injuries with their number one performer, Tina Brinkman. We have the senior and the freshman who really starred in the meet along with the Fox. The KG veteran and the young rookie with me right now. Uh, and first of all, congratulations, Tracy Summer. A great uh, way to dive right into uh, collegiate gymnastics here. Thank you very much. It was exciting. Uh, and you, you just seemed to keep this team pumped up, and, the, and yet you didn't let it affect what you were doing, and you went out and seemed to hit everything. Well, I want to keep the team pumped up, but I want to stick with my, you know, I guess my uh, sternness and my attitude on the floor. What about this youngster here? Uh, I talked to Coach Marson earlier, asked him if it was a recruiting coup, and, and he felt that was the case. She's incredible. I mean, I've watched her and I've competed with her since I was like 15 years old, and I've always thought she was just incredible to watch, and I'm so glad she's on our team and not theirs. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great way to start the season, but as the coach likes to point out, it's a long year. Uh, can you keep this going? I hope so. I'm just going to take one meet at a time, and I do realize that it's really early in the season, and there's a, a lot more to come, so hopefully it'll go well. Talk about one meet at a time. You know, when you're here, I know you love it because the crowd is absolutely just crazy. You don't get that when you get out on the road, do you? Well, that's when you have to learn to pump up yourself. I mean, Nationals this year is on the road, and that's what we're going to have to deal with. But like I told these guys right before they went up for floor, first meet, enjoy. Go out there and have fun. If you fell, who, who cares at this point? There's so much more. Suzanne Tracy, congratulations. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanks. Back to you, Bill. Thank you, David. One meet at a time. I've heard that so many times from football and basketball coaches, one game at a time. I've never heard a gymnast approach it from one meet at a time. Can the Utes repeat as national champions? Can they win number 10 with a magnificent seven with only seven performers? Well, of course, I'll say yes. <laughs> um, but the, the thing, you know, it sounds like a cliche, but it's, it's so true. If you start looking down the road, then the mistakes will start coming right now, and that's not what you want. Uh, one minute at a time means that everything that happens between now and then will build and will come back to them at nationals. So there isn't a meet that they want to let slide because you have a couple of falls that can really influence your psyche. For Dave Fox, Missy Marlowe, I'm Bill Marcroft. Good night.